Hi, I'm Jane Brogan and I work for Elna UK and today we're going to look at the range of Elna machines which are the 550, the 560 and the 570. We're going to look at how you set your machine up, what comes with it and what all the different features are for each model. So the first one of the machines we're going to look at is the Elna 550EX Experience. A nice machine it's got 50 stitches on it which we can access by the little pull out card here on the side and they will show us where all the stitches are so we've also got features on here we've got speed control so we can control how fast we're going with the foot pedal and without the foot pedal as well we've got a stop start button we've got a needle up down and we have a lock stitch button and we've also got a reverse button on the front down here and the stop start so we don't have to use the foot pedal if we don't want to. This machine also features top foot pressure, which the dial is on here. It's all quite self-explanatory if you look at the manual. And the tension is on the front. It's one of the things with the tension. The modern machines, you don't need to keep altering it. It's preset for each stitch for a standard fabric and thread. Very occasionally you may need to alter these, but it's not very often that happens. So we've also got on here, we've got a good range of stitches, say with the 50s. We've got all the basic utility stitches. I can pop this out again. I don't know if we can get close enough to see that. That should be. So all the basic utility stitches are on the top, the top rows. So we've got straight stitches, stretch stitches, zigzags, elastic zigzags, over edge, and a nice range of buttonholes as well. Then we've also got some nice decorative stitches on there as well that we can use. Another lovely feature with this machine is that if we've been doing a decorative stitch and we want to go back to a straight stitch, then we've got these little quick return keys on the front. So here we've got the straight stitch, we've got a zigzag, we've got an over edge and a standard buttonhole. So they're really easy to access again and it saves you having to go through the menu to select the stitch. The next model in this range that we're going to look at is the 560. This has got all the same features as the 550, but it's got the added features as well. If we have on this one, we've got 100 stitches. So again, instead of having one pull out card, we have two. So again, we have a good range of your utility stitches on here. With the straight stitches, over edge, zigzag, stretch stitches, they're all there blind hems, there's even a nylon on this machine. We have a plique stitch and again we've got more decorative stitches on here. We also, with this machine now, we have an automatic cut feature on it which is once it's one of those, once you've used it you will wonder how you ever lived without it. So we have the automatic scissors. So when you've finished stitching, if you press the lock stitch and then the automatic cut, it will automatically cut the thread for you and lift the needle, which is a really nice feature. It saves a lot of time and thread as well. And again, we have another feature here where if we activate this little button with the M with the scissors on, it will automatically cut for you every time you do a lock stitch. You don't need to press those independently. Once again, we have got the straight stitch, the zigzag, the over edge and the buttonhole available as quick selection keys on here. The final machine in this range is the 570 and this is a higher spec than both the 550 and the 560 as in it has got 200 stitches on it and it also has the alphabet function as well. So we, again we've got four little pull out cards here which can just slide out. They're really handy these because you can just pull them out as you want to select your stitches. So we've got a huge range on here. The alphabet is actually in the manual so that will show you how to bring the alphabet into play. Again, on the front of the machine, we've got all the same features. So we've got speed control, we have needle up down, we have a lock stitch, and we have the automatic cut with it, as well as the quick return keys, which are on the other machines as well. So these, again, are here. Just take that a little bit. So again, we've got the memory. We've also got the memory here and cancel. This is memory and cancel. We'll look at this machine in a little bit more depth in a minute. The memory is for when you're keying in your either your decorative stitches or your alphabet so you can memorise the pattern sequences. Cancel is if you make a mistake, you can just cancel it and it will take the last stitch or letter out for you. Um, and mode is how we select the different modes for the stitches. 
And again, we've still got the quick return keys here. This is how we activate for the alphabets. Um, and we've got all the same features that we have on the others, the speed control, lock stitch, needle up down, automatic cut. And once again, all these machines can be operated without the foot pedal being used, which is really handy um, for lots in lots of ways. I mean, I know I've got people who teach small children and it's great because you can take the speed down, no foot pedal, so you know it's quite safe for them to use. So now, can we just, we can have a look at all the feet and accessories that come with these machines. These now are the standard feet and accessories that are included in all three of the Elna 5 series. So if we can just quickly go through them. We've got three bobbins. There will be one in the machine, so that's four in total. Um, it's very important that you use the correct Janome Elna bobbins in the machines. They're all the same size. Then we've also got a quarter of an inch foot, satin stitch, blind hem, over edge and zip. They're standard feet with it. The zigzag foot A is actually attached to the machine when you get it. We've got the little screwdriver here, little flat screwdriver. We've also got the cleaning brush, seam ripper, and we've got four spool caps, too small and too large. You've also got a spare spool pin here which is really handy if you want to do a twin needle or sometimes you may need to use a thread, a, a heavier thread or a different thread so you need it in a different position. You've also a really nice feature with these machines is the buttonhole foot. This is our standard buttonhole foot which comes with the machine so the button pops in the back and you can sew to the size of it but this one actually comes with the additional stabiliser plate which is great to use if you're doing tricky fabrics, you're trying to sew over a bulky seam or you've got stretchy fabrics it pops on the end quite easily here and that's now attached it's clipped in and you would sandwich in between this plate and the bottom of the button hole you would sandwich your fabric that you're going to use and it guides it through really really well and it holds it firmly together so you it's not slipping or creeping or stretching so that's a really lovely feature on these and it's easy enough to take off if you don't want to use it one thing I will say is quite often when you get your sewing machine, the buttonhole foot will be in the little spares compartment at the front, so we haven't forgotten to put it in. It is there, it's just not where you think it's going to be. Now I want to have a quick look at the manual that comes with all machines, because this is almost your bible for your machine, so it's worth taking a little bit of time to familiarise yourself with it. The first thing to do when you've unpacked your machine, is to look, it's on page four here, and it will show you everything that should be in there. So just double check that you've got everything with it. It's also listed on this side. Um, and it's just, as you go through it, there's just lots and lots of information in there. It tells you how to thread it, how to wind a bobbin, how to use the press the foot top pressure dial. All the different stitches are also covered in here a little bit further on doing your buttonholes, using the stabiliser plate. So it's a very comprehensive manual. All your information's in there. And for each stitch, you will see here it's a blind hem. It will tell you what foot you need to use, where your tension should be, what stitch you're using. It's all here. Always experiment on a scrap first of the fabric that you're using, just to make sure, because you may need to tweak the settings occasionally for different fabrics. <music> So now we're going to have a quick look round all the features and how we can use the screen on the 570. So as we've said before, very briefly, this is a start-stop function. It's really handy this to use if you don't want to use the foot control. And you can just pop that out and just switch it on using that and switch it off again. We've also got reverse here. We've got a lock stitch which will stop. If you're doing a decorative stitch, it will finish the stitch pattern before it stops. It will then do some little stitches on the spot and tie off for you. We've got the needle up down, so if you want it, the needle will stay in when you stop, but sometimes you might want to take it up to move or anything like that, so you've got that availability. We've also got the scissors on here, the automatic cut, which is a fabulous feature. And here we have quite self-explanatory tortoise and hare speed control. The speed control, when we set it, whether we're using the stop start button or the foot pedal, it will stay the same speed. If we're using the foot pedal, we can put it right to the floor and it will not go any faster than you've got the machine set at, which is quite a handy feature if you want to be quite particular when you're sewing something. Equally, you can make it slower 
or faster while you're sewing. You don't need to stop to do that. So it's a really good feature. Now we're going to move on to, I'm going to actually switch the machine on now. So it will always default to a straight stitch, which is zero, zero. And it will always tell you which foot we need to use. And this, these two little ones here are the stitch widths and the stitch length. These are worked using the plus and minus buttons underneath. With the stitch width, the straight stitch doesn't have any width on it, so we can actually move that really well. So we can take it from naught right through to seven, so we can move the needle quite a good distance. I'll pop that back onto 3.5, which is a central point. And again, the stitch length. It will automatically set the stitch length for you. You can alter it if you want to. Um, so it's just the case of playing with your machine when you're getting it and see what suits you. But it, again, it's minus and plus on here. The little buttons here work in conjunction with the mode. So we're on mode one, mode two, and then we're on the alphabets now. So again, just play with those here. And you'll see the little green light is active. Equally, we've still got the feature here. We're on a straight stitch, but if I want to go to a standard buttonhole, I can just press that and it automatically takes me there and tells me what foot I need to use and how I need to set it up. So it's really handy. It's really worth spending some time getting used to this when you first get your machine. It's very similar on all of them. This machine has got more features on than the 550 and the 560 because it doesn't have the alphabet on those. Equally can't memorize patterns, stitch patterns. So that's where you sort of the higher machine comes in for you. And again, we can just pop the cards out here if we can see them. So we've got here, we've got the availability on most sewing machines now, or the Elna ones. A lot of people don't realise the second stitch here, if you select that, which is zero, 01, so I'm going to pop that back to a straight stitch, and zero, 01 is that. This stitch will now automatically, when we start sewing, it will reverse three stitches for us and then come forward again to tie the seam off. And when we finished our seam, we can just press the reverse button and it will do the same again automatically for us. We've got different stretch stitches here. So you've got your standard triple stretch. And then we've got the lightning stitch. Here. We've got middle and left on here. That's what these mean. And again, the same middle and right on the zigzag. So many people ask what the little letters are for. And that's what it is. Each stitch that you select will always have on the screen which foot you need to use with it and it's wise to use that foot with it you get a much better result again we've got a massive range of buttonholes on here which cover everything all across here and again we've got stretch ones we've got bar tacks we've got an eyelet we've also got a good range of applique stitches down here and then we're coming more onto the decorative stitches when we go onto the other cards i'll pop that one back in and that one. So again, we can see more decoratives here. We've got some patchwork stitches here. We've got a piecing stitch as well. The piecing stitch will automatically drop your stitch length to 1.8, which is a standard that we would use. We've got mock hands quilting. We've also got a really good stitch on this machine, which is a serpentine stitch, which is on usually on the much higher range models, but this is a really lovely stitch if you're doing a lot of patchwork. back in and again we've got some more stitches on here more decoratives again i would use a lot of these for decorative stitching when i'm quilting we've got satin stitches as well on here then we've just got some little decorative ones on here and on the last last card as well so you can just select these but you can combine them as well using the um, memory on the machine which is a really nice feature if you are combining your stitches, the thing to remember is if you want to keep doing it as a continual pattern, then just leave it. If you only want to do it once, then you need to pop a lock stitch on, which is on the end here. It's always on there. The last stitch down there, and then it will just do the number of stitches that you've selected for it to do. So that's a very quick tour around the machine. Now we're going to have a look at how we can thread it up and wind a bobbin. So now we're going to look at winding a bobbing and then threading the machine up as well so we're ready to sew. Most importantly, you need to make sure that the spool caps that we get with the machine, we've got two different sizes, so I'm using quite a small spool of thread, so I would use a smaller spool cap for it. So 
So when we pop this on, make sure that you've got the, the spikes pointing out on this as it were. I see so many people with them the other way. The danger of doing that is the thread is going to jump behind it, get tangled up, and you will have a real mess when you're sewing then. So round here, this is a tension here. We need to make sure that we have actually pulled that into the tension guide so we know it's actually sitting in there. The bowing goes on. There's a couple of ways of doing it. I personally tend to wind it round, but there's some little holes in the top so you can pop it through there if you want. I'm just going to give it a few turns round so it's secure. Take it across so I've activated it, if we can see that. So the bobbin is now activated and I can now press stop start and it will wind the bobbin for me. Again, we can speed it up with speed control if we want to. And then we've got enough thread so we can just stop so that's winding the bobbin it's across now make sure that it's really firm when you've wound it if it's soft and spongy then you haven't got the thread in the tension on here properly as yet so you will need to recheck it because you won't get a good stitch if you've got a spongy bobbin i'm going to take this off now take it round cut the thread on here so we've then got the bobbin ready to pop into the machine So now we've wound our bobbin, we're going to thread the sewing machine. One of the really important things when you're threading your sewing machine is to match the spool cap to the side of the reel of thread that you're using. So if we're using a smaller one, we use a smaller spool cap. And also just notice that the little prongs go out, not in. If you've got them in, the, the tendency will be the thread will catch behind them and tangle up and it will snap and stop and it'll, it just won't sew properly. So we've got that there. So now thread by numbers almost so it's one two three four five so we're going to thread it up before we start to thread the machine up we need to make sure the presser foot is lifted because that will then open the tension discs for us so the thread is actually laying in the tension properly so we're underneath so we're now going to go one two three four through the take up lever here make sure the thread is right down in the front of it so it doesn't jump out again when you start sewing then we're going to go through the front guide here through the little guide so we've gone behind that guide through the guide on the side of the needle we can now pop the foot down so that's running really freely now when i put the foot down it's put the tension on so it's not going to run away with us so now these machines have all got a needle threader as well which is a real bonus to make sure the needle's in the correct position, you can go needle down and needle up, and it will then set it. The needle threader comes down here, and then we are then threading from left across to right. There's a tiny little hook, and there's also it's like a little hook that comes through the eye of the needle. There's almost like a little, little hand on the end there that will hold the thread for you. Then we need to take it up fairly slowly, and we've threaded our needle. So I'm going to pop the loop through and then that's our needle threaded for us it's so much easier than trying to thread it by hand so we're going to pop the bobbin in now so if we look here that's slightly different than you may not be used to this easy set bobbin on the side so now to take the top off we just literally clip this and that comes out we've already wound our bobbin the key thing with your bobbin is it's p for perfect when it goes in or because I'm left-handed I just automatically think top left it drops in here and it goes under both of these two so I don't know if you can see it goes under this one and this one and make sure that I just hold it so it doesn't spin and you'll feel it clip in and it's round and through and cut and it's as difficult as that to pop your bobbin in if you don't if you want a long thread say when you're quilting then i wouldn't pop it all the way around there i would just pull the thread up like you would normally so you've got that long thread to tie in afterwards so now i think we just need to have a little look how we do some basic sewing on it so now we're just going to have a look at some basic stitches on the machine and how we can change them as we're sewing so first of all we're going to look at a straight stitch we've got the fabric under down you can start with the needle in if you like you don't have to and i'm using the start stop button today and the speed is really slow it won't go any any faster than that if you don't want it to i've actually got this set on the stitch 
that we'd had before. So I'm going to turn it up. And but you can go as, as fast as you like, slow it down. And when we want to stop, I'm going to press this and it will automatically reverse on stitch zero one for us. And the scissors. And lift the foot so it's now it's stitched for us and it's given us a lovely tie off on the back so it's nice and neat it does save an awful lot of time and thread with the automatic cut on the machine so i'm just going to have a quick look at a zigzag now so again i can select the zigzag off the screen here so it's just press it m it's in the middle again it's telling me which presser foot i need what the stitch number is the width and the length I'm going to slow that down a little bit so we can start on the zigzag now. It will tie off before it starts. But equally, while I'm sewing, I can make it smaller. I can bring it in. I can take it out if I want. So you really have a lot of flexibility. And because you've got a digital screen, I'm just going to pop a lock stitch on to stop it now. Because we've got the digital screen, it's a really easy reference so if you're doing a particular project you can take a note of your settings and then you can go back to them in for future use automatic cut and then we've gone so it's just a really really quick overview of what we can do i'm going to just select one decorative stitch so if we're on mode one here so what should we look for we'll maybe go for i don't know stitch number 60 so it's really easy to do it Six. Stitch 60. It's telling me I need the satin stitch foot and that's the width and the length. So I'm just going to pop the satin stitch foot on, which is this clear foot here. All the sewing machine feet have got a little letter on them. You see it's got an F here and that corresponds, it will tell you on the machine what foot to use. If it tells you to use a satin stitch foot, then please pop it on. It's there for a reason. Um, if I pop it over, you can see there's an indent under here. It's almost got little tracks. In. It's for the heavier thread. If you're doing a decorative stitch, there's a lot more thread on the top and it allows it to pass through more freely. To change the foot is really easy. We just lift the press the foot. There's a little black button on the back here that we can press. The foot will come off. And then we can pop the other foot on. Where am I going? There we go. The other foot will then go on. And that's clipped on now. What I would say, please just be aware and switch your machine off when you're changing the feet or doing the bobbins or anything. Um, it's far too easy to put your foot on the foot pedal and sew your fingers together. So we're going on there. Pull that out to the back and then start. And that's it, we can take it a little bit faster. And again, because we're doing a decorative stitch, when I finish sewing, when I press the lock stitch, it's now going to finish the pattern repeat before it stops. It won't stop halfway through. And then scissors. And then we've got a little nice little decorative stitch there. So now you can see we've got a nice little decorative stitch here. We've got our zigzags and our straight stitch. I would recommend when you get your sewing machine, whichever one you have, just to sew some stitch samples out so you know what all the stitches look like and, and it gives you an idea if you need to change the width or the length so you can do that and almost make a stitch bible it will come in very handy moving forward. So that was just a quick overview of the three Elners, the 550, the 560 and the 570 and some of the different features that they have. What I could please like to ask you is when you get your machine home and you've unpacked it make sure you've got everything out of the packaging and then please keep all the box and packaging because if it ever has to go anywhere it will need to go back in its original packaging hopefully this has been helpful for you and i will see you soon mm -hmm.